let's see how we can convert between Cartesian and polar coordinates in two dimensions. I'm going to start off by drawing a diagram. So first, let's draw the vertical axis. This is the vertical axis. This over here is the origin. And from the origin, we're going to have the horizontal axis. So this is what you'd expect to see in Cartesian coordinates. Then let's draw a vector pointing from the origin to a point. And this is our point of interest. This is the point that we're trying to uh, find coordinates for. So what we can do is we can drop down a line from this point, And that needs to be perpendicular to this horizontal axis. So it's perpendicular over here. So we have a right angle triangle. And what we can also do is uh, drop down a line over here except we're not actually dropping it down, we're moving it to the side. And this is also perpendicular. So this length over here, the length from here to here, is the horizontal distance. I'm going to call that x. So this is x. And this length over here, from this point to this point, is y. This is the horizontal distance, and this is the vertical distance. And what about this length over here? The length from the origin to the point of interest. That is r. We're going to call that r. r for radial distance. It's the radial distance away from the origin. And finally, the last coordinate we need is theta, this angle. And theta, we're going to measure from this axis over here. So from the positive horizontal axis, we're going to set theta equal to 0. And all the angles are going to, go, are going to come up from this axis. So we're going to start off over here, and then every positive angle is going to come up from here. Negative angles are going to go down. So if you want to measure a negative angle, you go down. And if you want to measure a positive angle, you go up. And it's the same if you go all the way around the circle. If you go all the way around the circle, you get to 2 pi radians, and then you're back to 0. So that's how theta works. This is our angle. This is our radial distance r. This is our uh, vertical distance in the Cartesian coordinate system. And this is our horizontal distance. So we can label this point using two different uh, systems. We can call that point x, comma, y, horizontal, comma, vertical. Or we can also call it r, comma, theta. So we specify the radial distance and the angle. Or we can specify the horizontal and vertical uh, system over here. So these guys are the naming conventions for this point. We want to know how we can go back and forward between these two systems. How can we take something that's represented in Cartesian coordinates and then put it into polar coordinates? And then how can we take something that's in polar coordinates and put that into Cartesian coordinates? Well, there's a systematic approach. So let's have a look at some of these quantities and see how they relate to each other. First of all, let's have a look at x and y. How do they relate to r? We can see that this side over here is the adjacent side of this right angle triangle. So this is the adjacent side. And this over here is the opposite. So we have an adjacent, we have an opposite, and we have a hypotenuse. So what we can do is we can use trigonometry to break this up into lengths. So when you're talking about the adjacent side, you're interested in the cosine of theta. And when you're talking about the opposite side, you're interested in the sine of theta. So we can write down some relationships. We can say that x is equal to r cosine theta. And we can also say that y is equal to r sine theta. Where is this coming from? Well, if we take cosine, cosine we know is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'll write down so ka toa. We have so ka, and we don't actually need the toa, but I'll write it over here. This is how we can remember uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent. So we're not interested in tangent for now. We will be in a second. But sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. If you take the hypotenuse to the other side by multiplying both sides by the hypotenuse, you have the r over here. So x over r is adjacent over hypotenuse. And y over r is opposite over hypotenuse. Right? This guy is the same as this guy. This is y. This length over here is y. So the opposite side is y. So we know that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. That is this length over here, x over r. So cosine theta is x over r. We multiply both sides by r, and we get x is r cosine theta. We can do an analogous thing with y. y over r is the same as opposite over hypotenuse. We have the opposite over here, and then we have the hypotenuse. 
And we take that ratio, and we know that ratio is equal to sine of theta. Sine is so, S-O-H. That's the opposite of hypotenuse. And then what we can do is we multiply both sides by R, and then we're left with R sine theta. This is probably the most important step in the conversion between them. So I'm going to put some boxes around these guys because they're very important. Then what can we do with these two guys? Well, if we see over here, we can see a right angle triangle. This is a right angle triangle. There is a 90 degree angle over here, and here we have theta. This angle over here is 90 degrees minus theta, or pi over 2 radians minus theta. That's this angle. But we're actually not interested in that angle. We're interested in the relationships between these sides. So if you take this side and you square it, and then you add it to the square of this side, you will get the square of this side. That is Pythagoras' theorem. So if we take x squared, and then we add to that y squared, we should get r squared. Let's see if that follows from these definitions over here. x squared plus y squared, that's equal to r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta. So we've got a square here and a square here. Now, what can we do over here? We can factor this r squared out. We can say r squared uh, is outside of cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. So what is this over here? This, from our trigonometric identities, is actually equal to 1. Because if you take the square of the cosine of an angle and you add that to the sine squared of an angle, you will always get 1. That is a property that you can see from unit circles. And there's some other videos in the mathematics playlist that are dedicated to trigonometric functions. So now what we can do is we can just set this equal to r squared. It's because this is just multiplying by 1. So we have verified Pythagoras' theorem for these definitions up here. x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. What is r then? r, if we take the square root of both sides, r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So if you start with Cartesian coordinates, if you know your x and y, then all you have to do is square those two values and then add them together and then take the square root. And that's going to give you the radial distance from the origin. Sometimes this is called the Euclidean distance. And this over here is just from Pythagoras' theorem. That's where this comes from. It's just a, a rearrangement of Pythagoras' theorem. Now, why are we not considering the negative solution? Why can we ignore that negative solution? Well, if we take the convention uh, that r is a positive value, then we can ignore the negative solution when we take the square root. Now, what would the negative solution look like on this diagram? The negative solution would be r pointing in the opposite direction. So we'd have to extend this diagram and go outwards into this direction. So that's the, the negative r direction. It's the opposite direction from the radial distance. So if you're a point over here, the opposite direction is to go towards the origin and not away from the origin. So we can actually ignore that because we already have a system of describing the points over here. We don't have to put the, radius, uh, the radial vector down through the origin and point backwards into this direction. Because the angle of theta can wrap all the way around. So theta is already describing all of these points over here. So we don't have to worry about extending that definition of r to include negative values. And if r is equal to 0, then we're sitting directly on this origin. r equals 0 is directly on the origin. And then you don't even have to worry about theta, because theta becomes irrelevant. You're just sitting on the origin. There's only one point that can satisfy r equals 0. Now what we want to do is focus on the angle. So we have a way of starting from r and theta, and then constructing x and y. And we also know how to get r from x and y. But what about theta? What can we do with theta? Well, let's take the ratio of this guy and this guy. Let's take the ratio y over x. So we're going to take the vertical distance, and we're going to divide that by the horizontal distance. And if we do that, what are we going to get? Or write it out in full from these definitions. So we're going to get r sine theta divided by r cosine theta. So that's just that follows from these two definitions up here. These r's are going to cancel. You're dividing r by r, that's just going to give a 1. So then we're going to be left with sine theta over cosine theta. And this is also known as tan theta. So this is tan theta. So we know that tan theta is the ratio of y over x. And how can we isolate this theta? 
But what we can do is we can say theta is equal to tan to the minus 1. Where this is the arc tan, or the inverse tan. And we need to put y over x into this function. And that's going to give us theta. So this uh, is not 1 over the tangent. That would be the cotangent. This is equivalent to the arc tan. This inputs a length, and it spits out an angle. So it tells you what angle is associated with the tangent length. And the tangent actually, uh, this, this function, the tangent actually corresponds to a length uh, that can be drawn on the unit circle. It actually corresponds to, I'll draw a mini version of this down here. If we draw the unit circle like this, and we have the horizontal and the vertical axis, and we have some points sitting over here. This distance over here, as we talked about before, that is the cosine. This distance over here is the sine. That's what we have on this diagram, where we have cosine theta and sine theta. And this distance from here down to here, this is the tangent. So the tangent goes from, here, from the circle over here down to the horizontal axis. So this is the distance that is associated with tan theta. So every angle has its distance over here. And what we can do is if we know what the distance is, we can get back the angle. So we can work backwards. And that's what this function does. It inputs this ratio of y over x, and it spits out theta. So another way of looking at tangent is tangent is the ratio of so and ka. If you have something that is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and you divide by the adjacent over the hypotenuse, what's going to happen? This hypotenuse and this hypotenuse are going to cancel, and you're just going to be left with opposite over adjacent. So that's tangent, opposite over adjacent. Now if we look at this diagram, opposite is over here, adjacent is over here. So we have this length, which is y divided by x. Y divided by x is opposite over adjacent, and that is the definition of the tangent. So that is where this comes from. That's why we're taking the ratio of y over x. So this isn't just some random thing that we're just uh, postulating here. Right this, this actually has some reasoning behind it. All of these lengths have uh, visual interpretations on the unit circle. So this over here, the, the horizontal projection over here, that is the cosine. The vertical axis projection over here, that is the sine. And the ratio of sine over cosine is the same as this length over here in the unit circle, and that is the tan, the tangent of the angle. And if we just do the inverse tan of y over x, we can get theta. So if you start with x and y, if you have the Cartesian coordinates, if you have x and y, you can create your r value. You can generate that from x squared plus y squared. You take the square root of that. That's how you get r, the radial distance. And if you want to get the theta from x and y, all you have to do is take y over x, and then take the inverse tan of that, and that's going to give you theta. But if you start with polar coordinates, and you want to get x and y, you're going to use these definitions over here. This is x and y written in terms of r and theta. And the only difference is you have a cosine over here and a sine over here. So this is how you convert from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates, and then from polar coordinates back to Cartesian coordinates. This is going to be very, very useful all throughout physics. So in a lot of the classical mechanics examples that we're going to look at, we're going to need to break up vectors with cosines and sines. And we're going to keep moving backwards and forwards between polar and Cartesian coordinates, especially when we get to quantum mechanics. This is going to become very important in quantum mechanics, because we're definitely going to be looking at things that are in polar coordinates and things that are in Cartesian coordinates. If you want to see more of those videos, make sure to find uh, all the videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find those if you click over here.